In this video, I'm going to show you how to freeze water using a speed light. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. Now today it is boiling hot here in the studio, probably one of the hottest days of the year as the UK is having a, a wonderful mini heat wave. So this is the perfect day for getting out some water and start throwing it around the studio because we're going to do a real wet based photo tutorial. Now, before anybody worries, this is not red wine. This is actually just water with a bit of red food coloring. In fact, here in the UK, it is illegal to waste red wine by throwing it around for the purposes of photography. So the idea is actually really simple. I'm just gonna get the glass. I'm gonna give it a bit of a shake. The, the water will come out and we'll photograph the results. We'll then take two or three of the best pictures into Photoshop and create the final image. So let's start by running through the equipment we're gonna need. Now, of course, it all really starts over here with the camera. So this is the Canon 60D, and the reason I'm using the Canon 60D today is because this whole thing is gonna be run by flash, one single speed light. And to trigger the speed light, I'm gonna use the 60D's built-in little pop-up flash, which will act as a master. All I need to do is just dive into the menu system and set that correctly. So we'll go into the menu and we'll turn the flash on to be the master to control the uh, speed light for off-camera flash. Now for the lens, I'm using my, my old favorite, my Canon 24105. There's one advantage to this particular lens today, it's weather sealed, <laughs> and that, that might just come in handy. I'm not expecting the water to fly as far as the, uh, the lens here, but it's always just nice to know. So that's the camera setup, but the most important bit of this whole thing is gonna be over the other side, and it's the flash. So today I'm using my Canon 580EX Mark II flash. Now this has actually been superseded by the Canon 600EX. And it's a brilliant flash because it's very powerful. It can be set to full manual, which is gonna be really handy for what we're gonna do. But most usefully, it can be set into slave mode. And that means that this will act as a remote off-camera flash being triggered and controlled by the 60D's little pop-up flash. What's gonna happen is the light's gonna fire out of the flash gun. It's gonna hit my white background here. This is a reversible black and white background. And the light will then bounce backwards through the glass, through the water, and that's what's gonna illuminate the scene. Okay, so let's start with the flash. Today is not a day for ETTL. I wanna be in complete control and I wanna have consistent results. So I'm gonna work in manual on the flash. And I'm gonna turn the flash power down to about 1 8th power. Now the reason I'm choosing a low power setting is because the lower you make your power, the less light your flash produces. But because this is a speed light, the lower you put your power setting, the shorter the duration that the light is on. So that's what's gonna make things really freeze. With a longer duration flash, more power, I'd get a brighter image, but it wouldn't freeze the water quite so well. So about one eighth of a, a power on this flash gun is absolutely ideal. You may find a little bit more, a little bit less on your own flash gun may work depending on the model you have and how powerful it is. Over to the camera. So for the camera settings, I'm gonna start really with the shutter speed because that's the easiest one to figure out. The shutter speed is gonna be my flash sync speed for this camera or just below. So I'm gonna dial in a 200th of a second. Next fairly easy one is gonna be the ISO. I've set that flash quite low, about an eighth power, so I'm gonna need a little bit more ISO than perhaps I would normally like to, to compensate for that. But um, at 400 ISO, the 60D is a brilliant camera, works just fine, as do most modern SLR cameras at 400 ISO. So what about the aperture? That's the one that I'm gonna juggle up and down to try and get this white background to actually come out white. So let's just frame up the shot and see what we get. Okay, so I'm on f11 at the moment, and when I take a picture at f11, what I get is a background that isn't particularly white. I mean, it's, it's mostly gray and then getting even darker at the corners. So let's try something different. Let's go to the other end of the scale somewhat. Let's try f5.6. So that's two stops more light coming into the camera. 
And that, yeah, okay, well that's really, really white. That's probably a little bit too much. So maybe in the middle might be good. Let's try F8, slap bang in the middle of the two. And yeah, I can see on the back of the camera here that I've now got a nice amount of blowout on the white areas, but it's not perfectly white all over. So I reckon we can open up another third of a stop, F7.1, and that should hopefully give me a nice happy medium, and that's beautifully white everywhere I want it to be. So that is the, the settings in the camera done and fixed. They're not gonna change. Now I need to sort out the focusing because there's nothing worse than standing here taking the picture and throwing the water in the air and then finding that the camera didn't take the picture because it was hunting for focus. So we've got to put it into manual focus and first we've got to get everything in focus. So around we come and I'm gonna frame it up so it's right at the bottom of the screen because the water's going to go up in the air, so I'm going to need that extra space to capture the water coming up. Okay, and once you've got it in focus, all you need to do then is switch from autofocus to manual focus, and you're set. Okay, so that's everything ready to go. I've got my little remote release cable I can reach, and we'll get rid of the water. We'll need some of that in a minute. And then all I need to do is, um, well, start making a mess. Now, before I actually start making a real mess, let's just test everything is working. I'll put that in the middle, take a shot. Did the background light fire? Yes, it did. So I'm happy that everything is set up the way it should be. So now all I need to do is to give this a little bit of a, uh, a chuck in the air and uh, fingers crossed this will be perfect first time out. Not a chance, but here we go, ready? And now you can see why I'm wearing old clothes, because this is a seriously wet and messy job. Okay, how did that work? Pretty good, not bad at all. I just lost the top of that one, and that's something that's gonna happen quite often. Okay, I was a little bit high, so I shall start a little bit lower. Again, here we go. <laughs> Completely covered, and uh, let's have a little look. Those very, very close to being right. We've just lost the, the height a little bit, so I'm actually gonna zoom the camera out a wee bit more. Okay, so we'll just give myself a little bit more room there. Now, if you zoom the camera out, what you've gotta remember is you're gonna to have to refocus, because most lenses, when you zoom, will change the focus slightly. So keep that in mind, and let's just refocus. Okay, so I've set the zoom a little bit wider. Let's just test everything, make sure it's still working. Yeah, okay, so we're good to go. Here we go. <laughs> that went everywhere. <laughs> that went absolutely everywhere. Uh, oh, but it was so worth it. Look at that, that is perfect. Absolutely perfect. So that one worked really well. Now the temptation is to stop. You think, oh yeah, I've got one. But for the effect we want to do, we actually want two of these because we're going to mirror them inside of Photoshop. So there's nothing else for it. It's a matter of reloading the glass, charge your glasses, and we'll go again. Okay, so we'll pop that back in the same place. We'll top up the wine. There we go. And get a nice firm grip right at the bottom of the glass. And here we go. Bingo. Once you get the hang of it, it really is very, very easy. And you, get, you kind of get into the rhythm of it. So once you've got your two images with the nice curving arc of water, you're nearly done. You've got one more image to do because I'm holding the stem of the glass. So that's not gonna be able to be used in the photograph. I don't really want my hand in the shot. I want it to look like the glass is just floating. So what I'm gonna do is actually hold it by the rim of the glass and then photograph the glass separately, or at least the, the base of it. So we'll just bring it in like that and take the shot. Now it's really important when you do this that you don't change the camera settings, don't zoom it anymore, don't move it anymore, and keep this in exactly the same plane so it's in focus. Okay, so next thing to do is just get those two or three photographs, the best ones, into Photoshop, and then we'll simply put them all together and create the final image. But before I jump into Photoshop, I think I better tidy up a little bit because it's, it's a, a little bit of a mess in here. <laughs> well worth it though, I think. So I'm gonna be using one, two, 
three images to make the whole thing. And what I've done is I've already put these through RAW, and to be honest, in RAW I didn't really do anything. I just added a bit of clarity, <laughs> not surprisingly, and I really punched up the vibrance as well because I like a nice punchy colour. I've also made a blank document, about 4,000 pixels on each side, and that's where I'm going to add in the individual parts to create the whole picture. So let's go grab one of those parts. It's going to be this splash right here, which just came out absolutely perfectly. Now I'm going to select it with the rectangle marquee, like that, and I'm just going to get the important bits of the picture, which is the splash, don't need my hand, and certainly don't need anything around it. So I wasn't worried about those areas around it, they're not adding to the picture at all. So all I need to do is copy that, jump over to the blank document that I made earlier, and then edit and paste it in. So that gives me one of my splashes, like so. Let's go grab the other one, which is this one right here, and again, we'll just select that like so, and then I'll copy it, jump over to my blank document, and paste it in. Okay, so I've got my two splashes side by side. You can see they're the same size, the glass is the same size, because the camera didn't move, and by chance, the splash is the same size, more or less, as well, and that's, that's just pure luck. So now, to make this into a heart shape, all I need to do is flip one of these two backwards and I think it's going to be the active layer. Let's do the one on the left. So I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, and then Flip Horizontal, and that'll turn it over. And now, as I bring this closer and closer, you'll see that it looks more like a heart shape being formed between those two splashes. Trouble is, if I go uh, really close together where I want to be, then the white background covers up part of that splash. Now, there were two reasons I wanted that background to be pure white, and the trouble we went to in the camera to make sure that was true. First reason is it just looks fantastic on a clean white background. But the second reason is if I change the layer blending mode, which is currently on normal, and I change it to multiply, anything pure white becomes transparent. And now I can go as close as I like. I can even overlap them if I wanted to. I actually want a bit of a gap there. And I'll make sure there's a bit of a gap down here as well. I don't want these overlapping. So something like that looks about right to me. And that brings them nice and close together and gives me that nice heart shape. OK, let's just move them around. I'll select both the layers and we'll, we'll kind of pop it in the middle, something like that. Because I need a bit of space now to add in the, the bottom of the wine glasses, the stem at the bottom. So let's do that next. We took a photograph just for that purpose. That was this one. So I'm going to select the base of that wine glass, edit and copy. Again, this is against that pure white bit that I went to the trouble of making pure white in camera. And then I'm going to come back into this picture and paste it in. So let's start with the right-hand side one first, I think. So we'll bring this down. Now, just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to drop the opacity just temporarily down to about 50%. And now I can use a bit of free transform just to spin this around, and I can see how these two should go together. So I can try and get the, the angle for this stem the same as the angle of the original wine glass. And it should more or less match up, because other than slight movements and tremors, um, there shouldn't be any movement in the camera. So everything should be pretty much perfect. OK, I'll click on the tick. I'll return the opacity to 100%. And I'll pop a, a um, layer mask on there. And then all I need to do is get a paintbrush with white as my foreground color. And I can just mask that away. There we go. We'll just bring that little drip in. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. And it all lines up very, very neatly. And that adds in the bottom of the first glass. OK, one more to go. So let's go do the other side. Again, it's already in the memory, so I can paste it in. And then I can come in here and drop the opacity again. And we'll just rotate this around using the same free transform like that. Now, this is a more of a tricky one. If you look on the original glass, there is a thick black line and a thin black line on the stem. But on my one I've just pasted, the thick and thin lines are the wrong way around. The thick line is at the bottom. So I'm going to right click inside this and choose, let me do it so you can see it on screen. There we go. And we'll choose to flip it vertically. And now everything is the right way around. So you've got to watch out for little things like that because it can catch you out. And again, we'll come in and we'll twist this and we'll pop it into position. Something like that. That looks pretty much bang on there. So I'll click on the tick. I'll return the opacity to 100%. And I will add in a layer mask and just blend that in. There we go. Bring the original back through as much of the original as I can. 
perfect. Okay, so there we go. There's the final picture completed with two perfect wine glasses and perfect splashes. So if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more from Adorama TV, don't forget to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.